Joining me right now is Senator Marsha Blackburn from Tennessee. Senator, it's great to have you this weekend. Thanks for being here. You've Good done so much you. work in uh, studying and trying to enforce the law in the face of the Chinese Communist Party. What's your reaction to corporate America enabling the CCP to gain ground and this move by Apple? It is very disappointing to see this move by Apple, but Maria, it is really not surprising. We've been very frustrated with U.S.-based companies that have continued to make products in Xinjiang province with weaker slave labor. And we also have been very frustrated with some who are not speaking out and supporting the Chinese people as they are pushing against against their government and this repressive regime, it would have been a good thing for Tim Cook to tell the CCP, no, our phones are owned by these individuals. They have bought them. They have bought them with this feature. The feature will remain owned. That should have been the consistent neutral position of Apple with the phones that are owned there. Now, we know Huawei went in and cut off some of their communication on their devices at the behest of the CCP. So it is troubling to think that Apple may have received such a request and may have taken such an action. Well, that's really discouraging. We know that Apple generated more than $74 billion in revenue in China in the last year. So perhaps it doesn't want to affect the money its business in China, so it followed what the CCP asked. I mean, this feature was used back in Hong Kong when the activists were on the ground in Hong Kong calling for freedom, calling for liberty, and the CCP came in and started throwing down its national security law and throwing freedom fighters in right. jail. Is that what the CCP was trying to stop this time around? Well, you're right about that. And there are a couple of important points uh, to remember on this. Number one, companies should realize you're never going to end up making money under a repressive regime. So do not help them further their cause. They're going to end up taking your company and taking your profits. So don't go there with them. What you need is free people, free markets in order for your company to be able to make make things work and to make that profit. Yeah. Now, when it comes to Hong Kong, you have to look at the Hong Kong freedom fighters. And when you look at how they fought, and now you've got people like Jimmy Lai that are getting ready to go into court to be convicted by the Chinese yeah. Communist Party for doing what? For having a newspaper. But, Maria, there is also the Open Technology Fund that we have in the United States. And this week, we've put effort into trying to see are they going to exercise opening the Internet for the Chinese people like they did in Ukraine, like they did in Cuba, like they have done in other areas where people were trying to get the message out, where they're trying to fight for their lives and fight for their freedom? That is what that fund is there for. President Trump did a good job of bolstering that. Congress Ma Congressman McCall and I have worked on furthering this, as has Senator Menendez, and we need to open that space over China so that these people have a way to communicate and get their message out. Well, it's incredible to me that Apple had to respond to the speculation that it wanted to take Twitter off the App Store, and yet there's absolutely no conversation about taking TikTok off the App Store. Now we see this new report that China used TikTok to go after politicians ahead of the midterm elections, uh, probably Republican politicians last month. Forbes is reporting that TikTok accounts run by the propaganda arm of the Chinese government uh, amassed millions of followers and tens of millions of views of videos mostly criticizing Republicans with no clear labels disclosing they were actually coming from the Chinese state-controlled media. So the CCP is playing the United States any way it wants. It got its guy, Joe Biden, in there. Uh, and now, once again, they're trying to interfere in elections. Elon yeah. Musk said Twitter has interfered in elections. Yes, and I'm so pleased that Elon Musk is going to make these files and emails available so people can see the extent 
to which the Biden administration, the Biden campaign, the Clinton campaign, the DNC were working with Twitter, because if they were doing it with Twitter, you know Facebook, Snapchat, TikTok, all the rest of them. It has been the same platform. Now, when it comes to TikTok, bear in mind, the Chinese Communist Party is a big shareholder in ByteDance, which owns TikTok. The people that work for TikTok in the U.S. get a check from ByteDance, which is owned in large part by the Chinese Communist Party. They have a goal. It is to take down the United States of America, to be globally dominant. How do they do that? They need to have people in positions of power that are going to be friendly to the Chinese Communist Party and not stand up and protect the people of China when they push back against a repressive regime. This is all yeah. part and parcel of their plan. They are building profiles of everybody that is on TikTok. They collect that data, they house that data, they manipulate that data so that they can manipulate you. These big tech platforms are working with the Democrat Party and these Democrat campaigns to control what you hear and see and say and wow. think and thereby how you vote. And, and I know you've worked so much on big tech, uh, Senator. Real quick before you go, you also sit on yeah. Senate Armed Services. And uh, there's a new study from the Ronald yes. Reagan Institute that says trust and confidence in our U.S. military and our national defense is slipping. Half said that woke practices are to blame. Others point to politicization of leadership and fewer Americans say they're actually willing to serve. Are you concerned that the military is getting too woke to recruit? We are very concerned about this because we're seeing the effects of it. This year, the number of high school seniors that are applying to go to our military academies is lower than it has ever been. The number of recruits for the U.S. Army, lower. Uh, they are 15,000 troops short. Next year, they're going to be another 21,000 troops short. And the reason I'm fighting this ridiculous vaccine mandate is because this is, they are removing people who have chosen to serve in the military, who have raised their hand, who've taken an oath to protect and defend. And they're saying, well, if you won't take the shot, we're going to fire you, even though the pandemic's over and it is not a vaccine like mumps, measles, rubella, smallpox, typhoid, those things. This is something that is going to be a seasonal shot like the flu shot. Yep. All right, Senator, it's great to get your thoughts on all of that. Thank you so much for being here this weekend.